uh, we've been wrapping up 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, just because we've come to the end of 21 days of prayer and fasting doesn't mean you quit praying or fasting. Uh, <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm grateful for what God's been doing. It has been a powerful time. Now, maybe you haven't experienced that at that time, but I believe God is speaking. I believe that with all my heart. He's speaking, and He's saying things to us. And what prayer and fasting is, is God's always speaking. It helps us listen. That's all it does. It just helps us listen. And so we've just been going through this amazing time. It's, it's been a time of refreshing and revitalization uh, of our story. You know, how many you know we, we tend to lose sight of what God's story for our life is? You ever get that place? And what happens is, and we go into these seasons, God rewrites that story upon our life. He, he, re, he restores it or, rev, or revises it or, or, or amplifies it in our life. And that's why it's so cool to have these seasons. And I'm watching it happen in many of your lives. I'm watching many of you, just God's just writing stuff on you. He's just doing amazing things in you. And that's exciting to me because as a pastor, my heart is that your story uh, goes to its fullest extent of what God intended for you. For your life. And so I've been watching that happen. And as we've kind of walked through this process, and I, I felt like the Lord asked me to ask uh, our pastors or our team here to kind of share. And we've had some amazing ways in which God has been speaking through our, our team here. And, and we've just, you know, man, fire, water. <laughs> we've had all kinds of imagery given to us, but that, that, des that desire for intimacy and trust and and moving forward and believing God's doing something. And we're hearing that over and over and over again. And I, I'm, I'm just excited about what God is doing here. And, and, and today I just kind of wanted to bring this into, you know, like, okay, let's seal this thing and move forward in it. And, uh, and, and as God's continuing to speak and give vision uh, to our, our, our story, I want us to cultivate and protect that vision. Somebody say Amen. How many of you can lose sight? You can get, things can get clouded out or others can distract. Uh, you can get lose sight of what God's speaking to you. And, and, and what I want us to do today is to kind of take, take some initiative in not losing sight, to be proactive in protecting and developing what God is speaking to us. Uh, I believe this, we need to say what God's saying to us over and over again. There is power in us speaking what God's speaking to us. If God has given you something, tell somebody. And not only tell them once, but tell them all the time. Wives, how many of you would be satisfied if your husband told you he loved you just once? Come on, anybody? Anybody here? No. No you're not a wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. No, you want him to say it over and over again. You know it's true. You know that's true, but what you want to know is you want it to be reaffirmed in your life. Here's the thing. Whenever we speak something out, there is power in what we say. And whenever we speak something out, it reaffirms that truth, either, or either that truth or that negative thing in our life. That's the reason why you don't want to speak out what the devil's saying to you. I'm not bound you up in this, but it's important. So I, I just, man, there's a guy in the Bible whose story ra was radically changed because he heard from God. He, he had a, a vision. And uh, if you brought your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 15. In just a minute, I'm going to get Pastor Rock to share something the Lord spoke to him. Uh, but uh, in, in Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 15 I'm going to read uh, um, about six verses. Verse 1, it says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. <laughs> in a vision. He's, he's, he's seeing and hearing from God. He says, Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. I am your very great reward. Now, if God hadn't said anything else, that would be enough right there. I am your shield. I'm your protector. And I'm your provider. How, how many of you, that, that would be enough? That's a good vision. That's a good, yeah, okay. But Abram, you know, he, he kind of is responding because he's already heard from God before. We're going to talk about it in just a second. And so Abram says this, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I am childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so my servant in my household will be my heir. 
But the word of the Lord came to him, this man will not be your heir, but a son who is of your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and he said, look up and look at the sky and count the stars. Indeed, if you can count them. And he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Verse 6, Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Lord, we just pray right now that what you're speaking to us that we would believe it and that it would be credited to our account. Lord, I pray right now that we would hear what you're saying and that we would believe it for ourselves, for the church, for our generation. Lord, I pray that we would take it deep into our spirit and that we would literally, Lord, we would, we would stand firm on it, protect it, and guide it. For I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. This is an affirmation of a promise that God made to to Abraham back in chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And and, and you've got to remember, at this time, Abraham is living uh, in Mesopotamia, far away from what we call now modern-day Israel, the promised land. The reason why it's called a promised land is because God promised it to Abraham. Okay? And so he's way, in chapter 12, he's living far away from there. He's kind of going about his life. And God says to him, and the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. And I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those that bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. And here's what happened. Abraham said, I believe. Not only did he believe, he packed his family up and he left. And he took the long journey uh, around the desert (laughs) and down the coast and into what's now modern or what's called Israel today into Canaan. And and now he's been there, but he's like, how can this promise that God's been given me come to pass? I have no children. (laughs) I have no children. Which leads us to chapter 15 when God reaffirms what he said to him. He, he reaffirms it to him. He, he reestablishes his vision. God gave him something to, to write upon his life and say, this is what you are going to be. This is what your story is going to be. And I believe this, that God is giving to Southside and to each and every one of us something where he's writing into our life what our story is going to be. And, and as we are kind of... Sharing about that, last Monday night, God just spoke to, to Pastor Rock, and I'd like for him to come, and uh, do you have the mic? Yeah, okay. And, and share what God shared with him. So Monday night prayer, Monday night prayer, um, there was a few people here, I was a little bit early, and I had some music playing, and I was sitting in the front row, and I closed my eyes for a little bit for some deep meditation, and uh, I fell asleep. I fell asleep, and be honest with you, I fell asleep, and uh, that's okay, and I, and I want to say this before I kind of get into it, and, and, and I realize it a little bit later, Acts 2.17 uh, tells us that young men will see visions and that us old guys get to dream dreams, um, and I did, I, I, I fell asleep, and it was, but it wasn't like I was sleeping in, on the job, what happened was this, uh, for one, if you know anything about me, I don't sleep, so uh, in the presence of God, in the, in the atmosphere of the prayer room at the time, uh, God just grabbed me and I just went out to sleep. It was a, a wonderful, relaxing, amazing 30 minutes of just getting some rest. And in that time, I had a dream. I had a dream of a, a, a pregnant woman in a delivery room. And uh, on her right, she was ready, getting ready to give birth. And on her right side was the doctor and the hospital staff. And, and the whole time, they're telling her, it's not too late. You can still end this. You can still abort. You don't have to go through with this. And on her left side was her husband, who was just saying, trust me. I know you can do this. Keep pushing. Trust me. I know you can do this. And then even as the baby was coming out, the, the staff, the doctors were still saying, it's not too late. We can still abort. We can still abort. And then she just looked to her husband, and, and he again just holding her hand and just, just loving her and just saying, trust me. You got this. We can do this. Just push. And that's about the time I woke up. And I immediately went to prayer to God. God, what are you trying to tell me through this, uh, this dream? And if you know, my wife and I are both involved in um, a, a ministry that, that helps women um, 
hopefully stopping them from having abortions, but ministering to women prior to and even after um, the, the, the abortion process and, and trying to, you know, help them through this. And so I asked God, what is it you're trying to say? And this is what he told me. And this is what Pastor Jack wants me to share with you, that the world is constantly telling us to stop. Don't trust. Don't believe. It's nonsense. The Word of God isn't real. In 2017, you don't need all that. But on the other side is, is the bridegroom. You know, we are the bride. And on the other side is the bridegroom who's saying, just trust me. I have something new. We are birthing something new. Something new is being created. And that you just trust me. Don't listen to what the world says. Don't listen to what the outside says. Trust me. I'm going to show you something you've never seen before. Please, I, 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 I've, been, I've been just overwhelmed by this all week. For one, uh, yesterday Pastor Mark was sharing during a training session that God operates just outside of our comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, and this whole dreaming dreams and vision thing for me is a little bit new and a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm, I work better when God's like, hey, rock, you know, <laughs> get out. But then... In prayer this week, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says this, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, and now it shall spring forth. Shall you know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And this is what I want to end with as I pass this back to Pastor Jack. This vision is for me and for you as individuals, but it's also for your ministries, and it's also for this church but it's for the body of Christ, the church international, the world church. And he's, God is saying that there's something new coming. I have a new thing in store. And it could be just for you today, that God wants to do something in you that you've never seen and that you just trust him. Go one more step. Push one more time. Just believe a little bit more. He's going to take you through that. And it's this church and your ministries are struggling or if you're having a hard time and you're seeing what's going on and you just... The pastors and, and God's saying, just trust me again. Remember, just like Krista talked about in her testimony, trust me again. Remember what it was like. Trust me, and we're going to go somewhere new. So please, church, be praying. I, I know God wants something new for us, and he's got something bold in store. He's just saying, hold on, trust me, watch what I'm going to do. Amen. I just want to take a few minutes this morning and tie that in and bring it back. A Ab Abram, this is before he's Abraham. This is before all the, the radical transformation takes place. The, the, Abram has heard from God. And, and what is he going to do with that? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. What's he going to do with that? And I just want to draw a few things from that discussion that God gave in that vision uh, with Abram. As he's in, in chapter 15, as he's with God, he's having this vision, he's in interaction, he's having this conversation with God, much like Rock is just, he's, he's just sharing in that and God's speaking, because I believe, I say yay and amen to what Rock just said. Do you agree with me? Well, that, that, then that throws some things on us, because we got to respond to that. It's not good enough just to, to know there's a vision or to hear that, but we got to react to that. And so I, I want to give you just some thoughts as I, I looked at that. And the first one is this. Our present circumstance is not the end of our story. Our present circumstance. See, here's what happened. God had spoken to, to, to Abram back in Mesopotamia, back near uh, in his homeland. He had spoken to him, and he had said to him, I want you to leave where you are. I'm going to take you to a place, and I'm going to bless all the world, all mankind through you. And, and so Abram did. He left. He's, he's put full, full, full risk, by the way. Everything you do that will be meaningful for God, if you're going to follow the vision God has, it will have risk in it. And so he, he just, he said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pack everything I have up. I'm going to take my family. And, and he takes his wife and his family and he heads to Mesopotamia, leaves Mesopotamia, enters into what we call Canaan at that time, into what is now modern day Israel. And he's down there and he's, he's living life. He's a foreigner. He's, he's trying to acclimate, goes through some crazy experiences down there. But he's now back in these places and he says, Lord, how can what you spoke to me back in my homeland, how can that be? Because I don't have an heir. 
You told me I'd have an heir. And I don't have one. And it looks like this guy, this, this Syrian is going to be, be the heir. And, and God just says to him, dude, that's not what's going to happen. And what we tend to do, how many of you know it's exciting when we get a dream or a vision? We get all fired up and pumped up about, whoa, God, you're going to do this. And he's doing a new thing. And I believe that with all my heart. But there will come a moment when you look at your present circumstance and you go, where is the vision? Where are we at? But your story's not done yet. And that's what God said to Abraham. He is reaffirming that vision to you. And God will come alongside us and remind us. You see, to, where we are today is not where we will be. And what we see today is not what we will see. I here to tell you, Ms. Elizabeth shared with us on Monday that she had seen that there are those who would want to write Ichabod over us. But God's saying that's not what be, will be written over us. God's saying, he's saying Emmanuel will be written over us. Emmanuel, God with us. That's what's going to be written over our lives, over our church, over the, the focus of this ministry. God's with us. Amen. When I first got saved and, and God spoke to me and began to change my life and he spoke to me about ministry and, and then he spoke to me some components of that ministry. He began to give me what my story would begin to look at. And one of the things he did is in prayer one night and listen guys, I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those weird vision and dream kind of guys. I'm kind of, you know, like raw, you know, let, let's do that carefully. I believe in it. Some people see visions all the time. I think they eat too much pizza. <laughs> or something else. <laughs> but it's real. And, and I'm with Rock. I, I think I'm shifting into the dreams component. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, you know, here's the thing. God just showed me, and I was in prayer, and he showed me. He showed me how, you know, how the flags in front of the United Nations are. They're just that semicircle of flags that's there, he showed me that. And he said, Jack, and he just gave me a visual, and he said, he said here's what you're going to do. You're going to preach in front of the, all, all the nations. You're going to preach to all the nations. And I'm thinking, wow, that's cool. That's cool. I don't know how that'll happen. I don't like preaching because I had never done it yet. <laughs> you know, but how's that going to happen? That was 1978. Some of y'all are going, really? You're old. That was 1978, um, probably the early summer of 1978. I didn't go on my first mission trip till the 1990s. How do you know you can say, where is that going to come? But where you are right now is not where your story's going to end. And what God promises us today, he will bring to pass. It may not happen today, but it will happen. And we will hang on to the promise of God. We will live as though it's today. We will act on it today. And one day it will be today. Secondly, God puts pictures in our book. How many of you know books are a whole lot easier to read if they got pictures? Isn't it true? You know, have you ever looked at a book and it's just all printed and go, I don't know. <laughs> but it's got some pictures in there. You kind of, well, okay, I'll do that. As publishers know that, they, they put pictures at the beginning of chapters just so you'll stay engaged. God knows that. He puts pictures in our book, in our story. And he did that for Abraham. He said, I'm going to give you a picture so you can hang on to something. Remember the story there? Verse uh, 5, he said, he took him outside and he said, look up at the sky and count the stars. Indeed, if you can count them. And he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Man, 
He gave an image for rock. He gave him an image. He, he showed him something. And for the rest of Rock's life, he'll have something to hang on to. There's an image etched into the, the spirit and the mind of his soul. He will know he'll have an image of what God said to him. To Abraham, every night when he walked outside, all he had to do was look up and say, God promised me that more than the stars, my soul shall my offspring be. That will happen. I have an image to hang on to. And in our lives, God wants to take what he's speaking, that our story, our, our vision, what he's saying to us, and he wants to connect with us and give us a way to, to, to hang on to it. Just like for me, he showed me all the flags of those nations. It was an image that I could hang on to. Something I could connect to. And listen, folks, I'm not done yet, but I have preached on every continent except for Antarctica and Africa. And I know all my African friends are like, got to get that fixed. I'm not sure how many penguins I can get saved in Antarctica. <laughs> we give it a shot. <laughs> I have been close to Antarctica, but I've never preached there. It's cold. It's really, really cold. Oh, but I am going to Africa, the Lord willing. Because you see, I believe God keeps his word. I believe God keeps his word. And God's starting something new in us. And if he's speaking something new in us, what we can't do is say, I don't believe it. I believe it. Amen? Amen. And if God's been speaking to you in this time of prayer and fasting, just ask him to give you a picture in your story. What is it that he can latch on to? And, and for us as the church, man, you know, we, we, we are, we're latching on to pictures. We're going to illustrate it in such a way so that we can all hang on to it, that every one of us in the body that is called Southside can connect to it, can make a, a personal connection to that imagery. We can see it in our whether you connect to what with Roxanne, you know, and Lord, we just, my, my daughter-in-law just had a baby and, and, and I got, that was so fresh and real with me and I was like, yeah! And even that very same day, last Monday, I had been in the presbyter's office and, and man, it just so resonated with, at the presbyter's meeting and, and our, our superintendent told the story of, of, of a couple in their church that had gotten pregnant and, and during the pregnancy it was discovered that the baby's brain was outside the, the skull. And it, and it was just like Ross saying that the doctors kept saying you can abort this even up to the point. And here's what, this is when your vision, your faith steps up. And here's what the husband and wife, the husband turned to his wife and he said, honey, why don't we just give him nine months? Let him live nine months. They're telling us he's going to die if he's born. Well, let's let him live nine months. And I'm here to tell you, the pa my pastor just said to us, he just celebrated his 20th birthday. But can you get something here? We just say, Lord, give me that ability to see what you vision, your st what my story is supposed to be. Thirdly, um, um, faith writes our story. Faith writes our story. You see, it's, it's not good enough just to get that, that vision, that word from the Lord, because without a word from the Lord, we go into disarray, or King James says, we perish. And we're receiving that, we're walking in it, but it's not good enough just to get it. You've got to believe it. God can speak to you a lot of things. But if you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. He can tell you that his, his mercy is enough. But if you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. He can tell you 
that He wants to provide for you in ways that you don't deserve and you can never earn. But if you don't believe it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that's why that's such a powerful statement in verse 6 of chapter 15 of Genesis. It says that Abraham believed and it was credited or reckoned or whatever the translation is to him as righteousness. In other words, what it's saying is Abraham believed what God was speaking and God said, you're standing rightly before me now. I'm going to do. And, and those, those words are so powerful because to, to be... To believe, and this, is, this so plays into what Pastor Rock was, was saying. It says, to believe, it means to stand firm in, to, to anchor yourself to it and not move from it. In other words, it's, it's where we're giving birth to something, and Jesus is saying, we're going to do this. I'll, I'll make it possible. Trust me. Trust me. And we turn and we're going, this hurts a lot, but I will stand firm here till this thing is birthed. I'm not backing up. I'm not backing away. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to listen to the voice over here saying, you can still get rid of this. You don't have to do this. This may take some, by the way, any vision we have will cost us something. That just was, that's for free. <laughs> and you're going, really? I could have done without it. <laughs> but if we're going to do what the vision speaks to us, it's going to mean we're going to risk and go outside our comfort zone. But Abraham believed, and it's interesting, that word credited or reckoned or imputed, I don't know what your translation says, but it's, it's, it's literally, it's a word that's used a lot in Hebrew, and, and it has a lot of multiplications to it. But one of the applications is, is to skillfully make or to apply to your account. And so what God did was, Abraham said, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. I hear what you're saying. I trust you. I'm standing here. I won't back up. I won't go away. I'm going to keep pursuing this. I'm going to stay in this. I'm going to stand firm in this. I believe this is what you're going to do. And God turns around and he says, with skill and with a, a, an ability to add to Abraham's account, he says, you are in right standing with me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it, it's that affirmation of Hebrews for without faith it's impossible to please God because we must believe that he is and, and that he rewards those who diligently seek him and, and, and I just want to tell you man whether you kind of latched on to what God's saying to you or you're just wanting to come with, with us as we're headed in that journey, as, as this thing's being birthed through us as individuals, as a church, and for the church universal, and I understand something. We live in a tough tough time. We were in the most adversarial time that we've ever been in in my lifetime. The church has no real power in the community anymore. But I'm here to tell you that when we believe God, the God who can do the impossible is still taking what he births in us and he does something that is amazing. What he's asking is, will you believe? Will you believe. Way you commit, even if just like that couple, and you'll say, we'll give them nine months. We'll let our little boy have nine months and see what God won't do. Will you? I understand it's tough sometimes, but we got to anchor our feet down into the promise of God and say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm standing right here on this promise. I'm not backing down. I'm not backing away. I'm not vacillating or shifting or moving because I may not see it this moment, but I will see it. 
because he promised. Amen? The last point. And this is the one that's going to get me in trouble. <laughs> Don't listen to your wife. <laughs> See, she's got her finger out. <laughs> Now, now, let me make my disclaimer here, because I want to go home. <laughs> and if any of you have ever done any counseling with me, or premarital counseling, or marriage counseling with me, you would know that in the context of normal things, I would say, always listen to your wife. Can, is that true? Yeah, because... Your, your, your wife is the greatest gift that you have aside from salvation. It's, she is, is, is a resource that was given to you to protect you and to help you navigate life safely. So let me make my disclaimer. But I'm going to go to Scripture. <laughs> uh, and I knew I'd get your attention. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one will get tweeted out and I'll be like Donald Trump. <laughs> I'll be in trouble. In the very next chapter, chapter 16, in the first two verses, it says this. Now, Sarai, this is before she becomes Sarah, Abram's wife um, had borne him no children. She had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. And Abraham agreed to what Sarah said. Here's the deal. That's why I said, don't listen to your wife. Now, first off, I don't have to worry about this because Denise would never say that. <laughs> and I guarantee you, every woman in this room would never say that. But... What I want to tie it into, because I don't want to demean Sarai, who becomes Sarah, who's the mother of promise. Don't, 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 don't do this. But what I want you to kind of connect with, and, and, and it's, it, we've heard so much this morning, even in Krista's testimony. She went through a period of time where she started listening to everything but God. And she paid a price for it. And what happens is, sometimes we want to help God get his promise here. And we usually really mess it up. Here's the thing. There's a difference. There's a difference <clears throat> between obedience to God and manufacturing the story outside God's plan. We're required or mandated to obey. Abram had to leave his home. There were some things God said for him to do. He had to do. Those were obedience issues. But at no time did Abraham get the command to try and manufacture the vision. And what Sarah was suggesting is, God sort of left us on our own. Let's do it ourselves. <laughs> and then, when it worked, what they were doing, she turned around and said, what have you done? Now, you know, <laughs> it will backfire on you. And I want us to be careful here. Because you see, Abraham, and there's a word we're going to, it's a spiritual term, it's called Covenant. And covenant is when we enter into something where God creates a bond with us because he's going to do something. And then with Abraham, he said, I'm going to do something. And he entered into covenantal relationship with him. And he said, I'm going to do this. Now you got to trust me to do this. And, and so he said, now here's the deal. Operates inside the covenants I've given you. And the covenant he gave him was his marriage to Sarai. 
And what Sarah said is we can kind of get past that and we'll go over here and do something else. And it became a thorn in their flesh for the rest of their existence. What I want to tell you is you cannot manufacture God's vision. Only God can do that. All you can do is obey God and let him bring the vision to pass. This is a warning as a pastor who's done this. <laughs> I'm just saying. And what we can't do is we either got to do it God's way or no way at all. If we want Emmanuel written over us, we better do it God's way. And what we want to do is we have this tendency to want to slip over and look to the doctors and say, what can we do? Now, don't no, misunderstand me. I'm not saying doctors are bad. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when we cease to listen to the voice that says, trust me, and start listening to another voice. And that's what Sarah, Sarai was in this moment. She, not meaning to be, but she came as another worldly voice. And what we will do is circumvent the vision of God. And what I don't want to do, I want the full benefit of God's vision in my life, in this church, and in our generation. And I believe God will do it. I do not want Want to turn to the wrong place and try to circumvent what God's doing. Amen. And, and I don't I know I'm animated, but this is life and death stuff. This is the success or failure of us as believers, as a church, and as a generation. Those children that were sitting on this pew, what we do with what God gives us now will determine to a large extent where their lives will go. Puts it into context. And here's the thing God's speaking, it's exciting. I believe for, for our church, man, I don't know, I'm pumped. I believe he's speaking to us, and we're doing some things to actualize that. And, and, and even Shine Effect is, is a new thing. Is that the title of your? A new beginning. That's their, their new, that theme for this year is a new beginning. Cool. I believe for us, this is something. I, I'm, I'm saying yay and amen to the vision. I'm saying, yay, and, and, hey, listen, wherever God is, people come. And I believe this with all my heart. I, I standing firm on it. But we, we must stay true to what God's speaking to us. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, Josh, you, where'd you go? There you are. There you are. <laughs> Man, I hope that if you are here this morning and you didn't, do not Christ, not know Christ or have kind of let that relationship grow cold, I hope that while they were ministering to you, you cried out to God and let him restore and, and renew your heart and make you a brand new believer. But I want to just speak to us as a church. I wanna, this is pastor speaking today. And uh, I know that sometimes we come to church, and we hear this, we sit there and we go home, and, and that's kind of it. But I don't want that to be true today. You know, Pastor Rock, and he felt like he was taking a risk. He really wasn't. He was just obeying the Spirit. He said, Let's, I want to bring up the pastors and the leaders, and I want fire to be in their life. What he was saying is we got to change things. And I, I, I agree with that. Pastor Jim has just challenged us. Pastor Shane challenged us. And, and what I want to say is, don't just sit there today. We get comfortable, and, and sometimes I just want to throw all the pews out in the street. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Because we get, we get comfortable. We spread out our stuff. We have our pew. It's written in invisible ink, but we shine our thing on there, and it says, oh, my pew. <laughs> you know, and, and, and once we get in it, we're like, I'm not moving. 
I might stand up a little bit, but I'm not moving. And I'm not trying to, but there is an action required. And uh, this morning I just was praying, and, and if you believe God has a story He wants to write in your life, if you believe that he's writing a story in this church's life, if you believe, if you, you're like him, you're willing to say, I believe, Lord, if that's true, if you believe that there's a vision and you're willing to say, I want to trust God, I want to look to the voice that's speaking, trust me, if that's you, I, I just want us as a collective body, as a group of people to, to stand up and come down to the front of this thing, uh, this stage, this place, this altar, and I want us to collectively say, God, I I'm standing here at the altar of commitment. At the altar is that spiritual term, consecration, if you want to put it. I'm willing to stand here and say, God, I believe. I believe. I will not let my person, person, present circumstance, I will not let what anybody else says, I will not listen to the false voices, I'm not going to do any of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the altar and I'm going to say, God, I've seen what you said, I've heard what you said, I'm coming to say, God, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. And I want us to begin to pray one for another and to stand in unison and say, we will let this vision come to pass. We will not back down. We will not back away. We will not step aside. We will not move from what God is saying. We will say, God, I am here to say, I believe. God, give me the strength. Give me the strength and the passion to develop and to protect and to watch over the story you're writing in my life, in this church's life, in, in my family's life, in the church of Universal's life, in the world's life. If that's you, just can we just right now, as, as it just begins to play, can we just begin to make that be your consecrated prayer? Can we say, Lord, I'm here. I'm at this altar. I'm saying yes to you, Lord. I'm saying yes, you will write over our church. Emmanuel, God with us. I'm saying yes, you will birth that which you have promised. It will come to pass. And I will not, I will not back down. I will not look to the side. I will not take false information, I will stand in the power and the might of my God. I will believe. I will believe. I will believe. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah.